Some of you may have seen the hashtag, hashtag save the ACL, and heard about my preservation first approach, or maybe you've known someone who's had that approach. It's beginning to spread around the world as other doctors have picked up on the, uh, this technique. The way I see the ACL reconstruction approach is, it's pretty much a one size fits all approach. If you tear your ACL and you're active enough to have a surgery to make your knee more stable, you get a reconstruction. That never really sat well with me. The surgery is pretty morbid and it's, it's not an easy recovery. As many people know someone who's had that surgery and have witnessed that, that it takes a long time and it, it's a lot of hard work and a lot of suffering. I always thought, isn't there a way where we could potentially decrease the morbidity of the surgery? In the early 2000s, we were moving from open repairs when we would do rotator cuff repairs to arthroscopic repairs. We saw the development of a lot of devices that allowed us to reach into the shoulder and pass stitches through tissue with this little needle. And we could grab the stitch and then pull it out and we could tie them so we could accomplish a rotator cuff repair without opening the shoulder. In addition, little anchors that allowed us to anchor the stitches to the bone came out. I simply transferred the technical aspects of rotator cuff repair in the shoulder down to the knee to perform an ACL repair because really it's the same idea. We're stitching tissue back to bone. And all over the body we do this. Any type of tendon rupture, biceps, triceps, pec, quad, patella, we always take the torn tendon and, and put it back to the bone. And when the tissue is sitting next to it, it'll heal. And what does it do? It heals the tissue to the bone. My experience led me to question all of the old data about the ACL repair not working. What I started to believe was that for those tears that were right off the bone, the detached tears, there's a chance that we could possibly anchor it back to the bone and get it to heal just like we do in the rotator cuff. In the beginning, I did my first one in 2008. I would sit and explain for an hour to the patients and I'd tell them what my thoughts were and how my experience was. And I remember the first patient who said, Doc, I like it the way you think. And he rolled up his other pant leg and showed me the railroad tracks because he had had one of the old procedures on his other knee and he didn't want that on his new knee. And so he was the first one. He let me repair his ACL and sure enough, it healed. He got better. He was skiing in four months and that was close to 15 years ago now. Over the first five years, I slowly collected patients who had a reason to allow me to do a repair, who agreed with the philosophy. And sure enough, we started getting good results. People were getting better faster. Why? Because the injury to the body is much smaller. Now we're up to about 500 patients who've had this procedure. We've published the technique, we've published the indications, we've published the benefits of this approach, we've published the failure rates. We, we've learned a lot over the years with, this, with the science of analyzing our results. And what I've come down to is the preservation first approach.